Today we will focus on a painting by Van Gogh from 1889 depicting fields with cypresses. I would like to start by elaborating on Van Gogh's life. Van Gogh was a Dutch painter born in 1853. He started his work life by working for Goupil, a company specialized in the reproduction of paintings. After working there in The Hague, London and Paris, he decided to dedicate himself to prostitutism and live a plain life in Belgium, where he painted the potato eaters, this famous painting. After seeing the poverty and sadness of the peasants' lives, he went back to painting, first in The Hague, in Antwerp, and finally Paris. In his Parisian life, he met many painters, notably Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Émile Bernard, Georges Seurat, Paul Gauguin, Paul Signac. Thanks to these encounters, Van Gogh discovered different styles and worked on them in order to find little by little his style and enriching it. In 1888, Van Gogh decided to leave Paris in order to join Arles, where Gauguin joined him. This is where the episode of the cut ear happened. One drunken night, the painter cut a piece of his ear to offer it to a young prostitute from the neighborhood. After Gauguin left, Van Gogh was alone and in dire distress. Received in a psychiatric asylum in the south of France, he kept on painting and sending letters to his brother Theo. Their epistolary relationship continued all their lives. In May 1890, Van Gogh moved in auvers sur oise in the northeast side of Parisian suburbs, where he spent the last months of his life until his death in July 1890. When he received a gunshot that would cause his death, a letter was placed in his jacket, ready to be sent to his brother Theo. The painting we will study and listen to was painted in the end of July 1989 in Provence in the south of France. The sky takes a bit more than half of the painting. The canvas is composed of different shades of blue arranged in waves and arabesques. The second half of the painting is composed of greenery, cypress on the right, as the title of the painting suggests, bushes and shrubbery, olive trees and other trees that are difficult to distinguish in the background. Near the field we can see little white and red spots, indicating the presence of poppies and other field flowers, a very peaceful landscape. The green of the vegetation, the yellow of the wheat, the blue of the sky, all come together in a dynamic movement that makes you imagine the breath of the wind and its impacts on the landscape. The peacefulness of nature and the field shows here a tormented painting. In one of his letters, written to his brother, we understand Van Gogh's torment and the psychological depths of his paintings. In June 1889, he wrote, Learn to suffer without complaining. Learn to look at pain without repugnance. That's exactly where you might get a little dizzy. And yet could it be, yet is there even a vague probability that in the other side of life we will see good reasons for pain, which seem from here sometimes occupies so much of the horizon that it takes on the proportion of a despairing torrent. Of this we know very little, of the proportions, and it is better to look at the wheat field, even as a painting. As many of Van Gogh's paintings, this one is almost embossed, because the paint is applied in a jerky manner, like a shaped set. The colors are applied with thick hatching, which gives volume to the canvas. This composition is akin to pointillism, which Georges Seurat and Paul Signac were adept of. Van Gogh was also influenced by the impressionism of Monet, Renoir or Degas, for instance. 
but also by Japanese works, notably those of Hiroshige or Okusai. His painting developed at the crossroads of different styles without really being able to classify it in a particular movement. Indeed, art historians have got into the habit of classifying artists into different artistic movements. And in what we call the ism of art, the movement which names end with ism, impressionism, fauvism, cubism, etc. Some put Van Gogh in the category of post-impressionism or neo-impressionism, but actually Van Gogh seems very difficult to classify. His way of painting, with his generous and vigorous brush strokes, has been built up throughout his life. Some art historians, as Georges Braque, gave a significant importance to Van Gogh's work's influence on abstract painting. Van Gogh, in his letters, was saying that his disease, quote-unquote, namely his fragile psychological state, was making him abstract. He also wrote that the simple fact of being an artist was making oneself abstract. As for his art, he considered that abstractions were paintings made from memory, idealizing what we would like to represent. Abstraction would therefore not be a work inspired from nature, but coming from the idea or the memory of a subject we want to paint. The mystery of Van Gogh's painting still awaits analysis and discoveries. Van Gogh's painting is an outlet and a part of his personality. His paintings and letters, which became famous after his death, are indispensable legacies to better understand him, and I invite you to discover them. The painting with Justin lies, simultaneously peaceful and full of movement, makes us want to take a deep breath as the wind in the warm and bright landscape of nature. Art, notably through painting, is a manner of capturing nature by making an immutable representation of it. <laughs> 